Hello, this is uh, Building an iOS app with C Sharp, Module 4, Video 2. Uh, in this video, we are going to design and implement our logger service. So let's jump straight into Xamarin Studio. And let's start with the contract. So let me just create a directory here for our logger service. Uh, we know we're going to need at least uh, the one interface, so let's start with that. We'll call that the iLogger service. Now what we're going to need from our logger service is the ability to get something to log with. Um, you may have used logging frameworks before that um, do not give you any control over the name of the log entries. Um, so what tends to happen in my experience is you end up uh, prepending a name to every log entry which just gets gets old really quickly so I'd rather that the logger service give us a logger uh, to work with and you can give it give each logger a name so in other words we'd want something like something like this where you can give it a type or maybe you can just give it the name so on our logger interface We are going to need, um, well, let's start with the name. We're going to need the ability to check what uh, what log levels enabled. So, for example, is debug enabled? Um, this will just allow us, in certain scenarios, to skip um, uh, what would otherwise be an expensive log statement. So, we're going to need that for each level. So, I'm going to have debug info. Oops performance. We'll talk about that in a, bit, a bit in a sec. Um, warnings. And errors. And then we're going to need uh, methods to um, log at the various levels. So for example, debug and give it the message. But we also want some helper, me helper methods, helper overload should I say. Um, to do formatting, Oops. and um, to do exception logging. And for each level that we support, we're going to want these methods. So info, uh, performance is a little bit different, I'll come back to that, warning and then error. So let me just go and fix these up. Okay, and as I said, the performance side of things is a little bit different. What we want it to do, or what I want it to do, is to allow us to time a block of code very simply. So in other words, just in a using block, you could say using logger.perf and then give it the message and then when the block is um, exited it will log a statement saying how long that block took to execute. So that means we're going to need to return something to, to dispose. And also it means it doesn't really make sense to log um, performance information about an exception. So we'll get rid of that one. Okay, and that defines our interface for the logger. Let's go back to our logger service. The other thing we're going to want is, is some kind of threshold. Oops. I'm just going to call it log level um, threshold and we can get and set that. Typically speaking, we would you know, we might have it set um, to a lower threshold for debugging uh, to, for debug builds, and then we might set it to a higher threshold for our our release builds. So let's just create this enumeration. Now 
And by the way, I'm not going to bother too much with formatting um, while I'm recording the video. What I'm going to do is check in or commit what what we've done in the video straight afterwards. Uh, and then I'll fix up formatting and whatever else I find in the process, I'll, I'll do that as a separate commit. Okay, so we can get and set the threshold. We, we might as well also have the ability to check the level in this fashion directly against the service. The other thing is we don't I don't particularly want the um, logger service to dictate specifically what happens with log entries. Um, I'd prefer to leave that to the client. Um, so for example on iOS it's sufficient just to call system.diagnostics.debug.writeline um, and that log entry will end up in uh, the device log. Whereas on Android it might not be, we might need to do something different. So rather than have a logger service implementation per platform, I'm just going to expose the log entries as an observable sequence and leave it up to the caller or the client code to decide what to do with log entries. So that's going to look like this. I'm going to have an observable, and we need some kind of data structure for our log entries. That's all we need, so we'll just create this class. Actually it can just be a value type. It's just basically a, a record type, and um, it will just have timestamp And of course we need um, public get properties to get all this information. So that's it really for our log entry. Um, we could have defined this as an interface, um, but to me it's absolutely fine having a very simple value type in your uh, contracts doesn't do anything it's just it's just it's essentially is an interface okay so that really is it for our interface I believe um, so let us start writing some tests around this so I'm going to create a services folder here because remember that our, our unit tests project. We don't have a unit test project per layer. We, I'm just going to lump them all together so and put them in separate folders instead. If this was a really large application I wouldn't be doing this but it's not massive. So, Right and let's add a log of service fixture. Okay now in terms of our tests add this in first. Let's start with um, just making sure that our uh, simple is xxx enabled does actually uh, reflect whatever threshold we've set. We haven't actually created the service yet but let's hope that this doesn't get too annoying with Xamarin trying to autocomplete. Actually, let's just create the service and then um, have it implement the interface and then we'll fill it in as we go along. So we're going to stick this under services, logger, logger service. Awful, this generated code here, but I'll, I, again, I'll clean this up afterwards. Um, although it is difficult to read right now. 
hopefully that should be enough for us to work with. There we go. So if we've set the threshold to debug, then of course we should get true from is debug enabled. If we set it to something higher, then we should of course get false. And this pattern will repeat itself for the other properties, so I'll just do that quickly. Now, is error enabled is a bit different because there's no level above that, so it should always be true. We can't really prove that that's the case, but we can try a different couple of different scenarios and see that it holds. So there we go. Um, if we were using X unit, which I much prefer over N unit, um, we could have made this a theory, which um, iterated over all the log levels and checked that this was, um, oops, I've got false here, that should be true, of course, and checked that this was true no matter what log level we set. Okay, so next, let, let's make sure that get logger throws if we give it null as a type. Of course I have to cast this because there's an overload that takes a string, which we can also test in the same fashion. name is now. And let's make sure that if we use get logger for it and give it a specific type, it gives us a logger with the full name of that type as its name. as the logger's name. Okay, now for a bit more involved test, let's make sure that our log entries um, property ticks, the, you know, the observable ticks for every log that every log call that we make that's within you know, whatever threshold we've set. Um, this one's going to require some async stuff, so we need to make sure that our test method is async and very importantly you have to make sure your test method returns task not void otherwise the um, testing framework will not wait for your method to complete so it'll just say it succeeded straight away whether it succeeded or not um, log entries ticks for log calls within the threshold within the configured threshold maybe still have yep cool let's create a test logger now what we need to do is collect the log entries that tick on the observable as we're um, as our test executes and the way to do that just grab the entries Let's just take um, let's just take three of those entries. This is a uh, system 
uh, sorry, a re reactive extensions method, which I probably haven't referenced actually. Yeah, I need to add a reference to reactive extensions. So I'll add that package to my unit test project. Rx main. That's added. So now I should be able to, yep, grab that. Now I'm going to use a helper method that I've written before in another project here, just because it it's super helpful in testing. Um, I'll copy it across and then I'll, I'll explain it. And because it's only for unit testing, I'm just going to put it in this uh, unit test project. I don't know, it's supposedly bad practice to use system namespaces, but I just find it incredibly useful if you're writing extension method for a specific type and that type has other extension methods uh, in a certain namespace, then I just want to put it in that same namespace so that when I import that namespace, I get my extension methods as well. So in this case, it's system reactive link. And observable extensions. And this is the code. Just clean this up a bit and you'll see that I've not got this project referenced either. This is just a, an open source project of mine that um, has a few helper classes um, to do argument checking, um, exception raising and the event raising. Um, I think it's just the argument checking that we'll be using. You can see that it just adds an extension method onto every object to assert that it's not null. There's a whole bunch of other stuff actually to, um, well, depending on the object type, you can assert, assert that it's not null, assert that it's um, a correct enumeration member, etc. Sorry, I just had to grab the front door there. I uh, can't remember what, exactly what I was saying, but um, this uh, helper method, basically the idea is that it takes a, an observable sequence, uh, sets a timeout on it, um, and then turns it into a list. Uh, this is really useful for testing. I mean, you wouldn't normally use this outside of testing, but we'll see how this is useful in a sec. Just let me fix up these imports here. Okay, there we go. Um, so now we can use this from our test as, as follows. So we've got uh, an observable sequence. We're going to take the first three log entries that tick on that sequence, and we're going to turn that into a list. I don't know why that's not resolving. One second. because I've not put the right namespace in here. That could explain why I was having trouble with these as well. Yep, okay, that's better. Okay, and that's still going to give us an observable sequence with one entry in it, which is the list. And what I'm going to do is turn that into a task And now what we can do is do our work um, and then await that task. And as per the timeout, if, if it doesn't happen within three seconds, then we're going to get a, an exception and our test will fail. Um, and obviously by awaiting that entries task, we're going to get the entries back. So we do our work here and then we do our assertions afterwards. So the work we want to do here, let's set a, a log level. Just set it to info and let's do some logging. So, if we, anything we log as debugs should just get thrown away because we're above that level. So, let's just do a few of them. 
and let's do some info. And maybe a warning and an error. Like that, and let's just sprinkle a few more of these in. Okay. So what we're expecting back, of course, is only the info, warning, and uh, error log entries. So what we can do is just assert, and by the way, this entries here is a list of log entry, um, because that's what our reserve all type is. So on that log, en each log entry has all these properties that we saw before. So let's just assert the message and maybe the log level. So we're expecting info. Two more of them. And of course the second one will be a warning message. And the third an error. So that's that's that test. Um, what else can we test? We can check that we can format our log entries. Again, we're going to need to do some asynchronous work here. But we only need we only need one here. Um, which means we don't need to convert it to a list. In fact, we don't even need that. We can just say first async, convert that to a task, which would just be the entry task. And then later on, we will await that. That's what we want to check is that message gets formatted correctly. Like that. And let's um, just check that exceptions work similarly. paste this whole thing to start with and here let's just stick an exception in as well um, a message with an exception and a parameter um, let's put this in brackets well, it's going to be difficult to read okay so we're expecting a message with an exception and a parameter and then the exception type which is system.invalid operation exception and then I think it looks like this and of course there'll be no stack trace in this case because um, we have just create uh, we've just newed up this exception we haven't actually caught it. it hasn't been thrown at any point so ordinarily you would see exception um, type here and then new lines for each uh, stack frame in the in the exception uh, I think that's probably good enough for the test for now let's switch to our implementation and see if we can't get this working uh, let's start with the easy stuff so threshold let's just store um, store that in a local variable And checking whether debug's enabled is obviously just checking whether the threshold. Um, I can't remember what order I did them. So the threshold. Like that. So the threshold is less than or equal to log level debug, which it. Um, 
and it's a similar pattern for these other ones, except obviously changing the log level. Now the entries, we're just going to use a subject of log entry, call that log entries. Now subject is a reactive extensions type um, that allows us to push log entries into the subject and um, observers can subscribe to that subject and get them, uh, get those log entries that we push in. And I need to add reactive extensions to our services project as well. And in fact, we're going to need to check arguments as well, so I might as well add help with Trinity. Like that. So all we need to do here is just return that. Actually, let's just call it entries consistent with the property name and finally we need um, to return loggers as they're requested which means we're going to need uh, an implementation of logger which we can just have as a, as a inner class let's, let's call it logger Now there's various ways we could do this. Um, for example, we could have each logger could have a lo um, an observable of log entries, and then the the logger service itself could kind of compose all those together or merge them all together. But that's a bit mm, a bit expensive performance-wise. So I think what I'm going to do is just have a reference to the logger service as the owner, and of course it will need a name. that and we can simply return that here and for these properties we only need to it's going to be exactly the same as, as the only implementation so we may as well just defer to that it's just the convenience really to be able to, to be able to access these items either on the service itself or a logger from that um, provided by that service. So that's the really easy stuff. Now all our uh, methods that do actual locking can um, call into a private method that does the real work. So let's define, well, you know what, let's do one first and then we'll refactor it into what we need. So here, we know we should check the message is not null. And we should check that the appropriate level is set. If not, we can just get out of there early and avoid some work. Um, Alright, this... Let's just defer this to an, an, another method. Uh, with it, it's going to need to know the level and the message. Let's just define that here. And obviously this needs to create a log entry. There's our log entry, and now we need to push that through to the owner's entries subject, like that. Let me just move this down here. Now, similar thing here, we need to make sure we don't have null arguments.
and in this case we need to um, again we need to check this level is correct but we need to format the message ourselves this and then we can just defer to our helper method like that now for the exception case I think it's going to be very similar I'm just going to tack the exception onto the end of the formatted message And of course, we need to make sure it's not null. Right. So that's the basic pattern for those three methods. I'm just going to um, apply that pattern to all our other methods. Okay, so that's all those methods apart from perf, which um, we're going to need special support for. So that's going to look more like this. Now here we actually have to return a value. So um, reactive extensions def defines a, a useful disposable um, type which has an empty disposable in it which obviously just does nothing when you dispose it. Now if perf is enabled we need to return something that does the perf logging so let's just call that um, perf block and uh, it will need to know its owner which is this and what message to log along with the performance information. And it also needs to do the formatting where appropriate. So let's define our perf block class. Um, I need to take a little tangent here again because I want to uh, introduce a disposable base class that I use in just about every project. Uh, I'm going to stick this in utility. And I'm going to copy the code from another project, another project of mine. Um, now you'll see a warning here about a T4 template. That's because I do have a template that I normally use to generate it, but in this case, I'm just going to hack it in. Um, the reason I use a template is because you typically want uh, multiple versions of this class uh, for different base types. So in this case, we're just extending from object. But later on, we're, we're going to find that we need, uh, for example, disposable reactive object, which gives us the same features as this class, but gives us a different base class. Uh, let me just add this reference, and then we can talk about what this actually does. Okay, so essentially what it does is it, it ensures that only one thread, uh, sorry, only only one um, call against your dispose logic is ever made. So if there's uh, dozens of threads trying to dispose the same object at once, it'll only allow one through and it will call a virtual member that you can override, called dispose of course, this one here. Um, and you know that that's only ever going to get called once per object. 
that's the basic gist of it. It's also got some uh, diagnostic information here. So if if you're on a debug build uh, and your finalizer gets called, that means something didn't dispose the object. So we can um, do an assertion here, uh, and if that fails, it, you'll see some output in the log. Uh, failed to proactively dispose of an object, so it was being finalized. So that allows you to um, see that you've forgotten to dispose something somewhere. Uh, in a non-portable library, you could also have a stack trace um, recorded for when the object was created, so you could easily figure out who created it. But this being a, a portable library, we don't have access to that uh, functionality. So the best you're going to get is, hey, you forgot to dispose this. Uh, you better figure out where that object was created and who needs to dispose it. Okay, so that's our disposable base. We can import that now. And here we're going to need a reference to the owner, owning logger. The message to log. And we'll need to keep track of time, so we need a stopwatch. And we want to start recording time, um, timing rather, as soon as the constructor for the perf block gets called. So we will start a new stopwatch then. Now in our dispose logic, we can check whether we're disposing. If so, we can stop the stopwatch and we can do the login call. And what we're going to do is supplement that log call with our timing information. So we've got the message and then we're going to put the timing information in brackets after that. And I've found that it's um, if, you, if you've just got the time span, it's a bit difficult to read sometimes, especially with short times. So I'm also going to do the number of milliseconds. So elapsed is the time span, and elapsed milliseconds obviously is all the total milliseconds elapsed. So that should be enough, I hope, to get us up and running. Let's try building. Missing a closing bracket here. Cannot infer type. Oh, silly me. I don't need to pass that in. Okay, that's building. Let's try running our tests. Um, I'm going to switch to well, I don't need to switch it. Let's just run it in the iPhone simulator. Okay, 12 test cases. Let's run everything. Lots of failures. Oh, of course, we didn't actually finish up our logger service implementation if I can find it wow all right so here we need to make sure this is not null 
And if it's not, we can just defer to our get logger um, and use the full type name of that type. Here we need to again make sure that's not null and return an instance of our logger. Now we could have a caching scheme here, um, but you know I'd rather wait to find to, to make sure we've got a problem before we do. I mean these loggers are pretty lightweight. It might end up being fast and not having a caching scheme, depending on how we're creating loggers. So let's try this. Two failures, getting close. Okay, so it looks like we've just we spilled something. Was strings different index sixteen? Okay, that's not helpful. Let's just try running this on its own. I'm not seeing it. Oh yes I am. My bad. Excellent. So this is an expected value. I'm going to remove that dummy test now. No longer required. which means we will need to update our test harness. Right, one more run. Excellent. So we're all working. We've got our logger service. Um, as I say, I'm going to check in this code as it stands, and then I'm going to format it the way I would usually format it. But I didn't want to uh, make you guys sit through <laughs> basically me faffing about with uh, formatting. So, but I will do, do them as separate commits so that you can see what I've done, and you know I may see some other small things here and there. Um, so you can look at separate commits for that as well. Alright, thanks very much. See you next time.